Hell yeah! Hi YouTube, welcome on back, I guess. I don't know. Fredo doesn't really do that good on YouTube. I'm just gonna be straight up about it. But that's just because of timing, maybe even availability, and so on and so forth. It tends to be a little weird, a little sketchy with it. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to get into it because it's season two and I love analyzing anime. That's my shit, bro. That's what I do day in, day out. Sit down, analyze, talk about it, laugh about it, be here with all of these fellow DGens. We do what we do because we love doing what we do, right? With that being said, guys, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, hold on. This <laughs> did I tab away from it? Oh, okay, I did. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now we're ready. Let's go, guys. Yes, this is season two, ladies and gentlemen. Tantric, thanks so much for the sub, dude. Appreciate it. Oh, Stream snipe. Right. Question for you guys. I'll ask it first and then, I'll, and then I'll jot down my thoughts. But here's my question for you guys. Does it feel like a passage of time for you? Does it feel like we've been on a long journey with Frieden for a bit? How do you guys feel about it? Like, we've been on a certain number of episodes with Frieden, traveling in this journey with her, in this world with the whole... Like, it's like a road trip. And I'll be honest, even taking that week off, for me, it felt a lot longer than a week. Like, I was like, oh, shit, we're back. And I know it sounds silly. It's ridiculous because it's only been like a week or two and we're back to watching Frieden. But for me, it feels like we've literally been on a fucking journey, right? We've been on an aspect or a change of time or we've been just progressing forward. And it's heartwarming, but at the same time, it's heartbreaking. And I'll, I'll, I'll mention this, right? So, for example, and I think I'll make sense to you guys unless I do this. In your journey, in your wild journey through life that you've done, that you've taken with, that you've excelled in, you know, all the ups and the downs and the sideways and everything. What key areas would you say you highlight in that journey? What memories stick out to you? That the small little pieces that we have here are forgotten about. Or maybe not forgotten about. What key areas were you like, you know what? This is a milestone for me. This is an opportunity for change. Were you like, I'll be 18 in five years or 21 in three years. And you blinked and you were there. How did this? How has this journey of life been for you? And, I, and this is a very serious question. And, and yes, I am asking it to everyone on YouTube and people on Twitch because a lot of people don't have the time to self-reflect like this. And oftentimes, even when we're sharing our story, narratively speaking, or even attachment-wise speaking, you know what we do? We jump. We start here. We jump here. We jump here. We jump here. And we jump here because our brain does not want to go ahead and equivocate some of these things. Our brain doesn't want to go ahead and fully identify and feel maybe some of the raw emotions that were felt in between. So I asked this to you as a way of self-remembrance. I asked this to you as a way for you guys to like, just conceptualize it for a second. Huge man. Yo, welcome on in. Appreciate it, man. Whew. Right. Ooh. Well, oh, welcome on in, Saturday viewer.
I'll share this story because it kind of... It's one of those moments where, you know, you know your paths diverge and you might never see that person again, right? For a long time, I had a close group of friends, you know, beginning of college, whatnot. Got really, really tight-knit. Amazing. We graduated. We got our associate's degree. We were hanging out one day. And, you know, we were eating and we had gone out and hung out. And it's one of those sunsetting moments, right, where you feel as though this might be the last time that you see this person in a while. And I don't know how to how to say it, but that feeling was correct. Like, you know, life got busy for both of us. We both split. We both ended up doing our own things. I ended up going for my bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctoral degree. He ended up doing whatever he had to do in life. You would check in on social media from time to time. But what do you see on social media or on other aspects once that diverged path happens in our world currently? Guys, what do you see? You often see individuals who manipulate the world around them, i.e. Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, uh, yes, I even say Twitch, um, whatnot. They only put the good aspects of themselves. You only see the good. You only see the positive. You only see the fake world or the narrative that they're trying to present of themselves, right? So as you're checking in, what are you often getting? Oh, hey, I'm good. Oh, hey, I, don't, don't worry about it. I'm good. Everything's going great. I shared this story because for me, I still remember this moment when the split happened. I still remember that moment when like, it, it was very, very defining. Come to life all these many years later, you know, like 10 years later, eight years later, you know, all these little branching paths were happening and whatnot. What do you think happened? And, and I share this because it hurts, but it's also a good semblance of like, if you need help, ask for it. If you need help, it's, like, it's okay to be open to it. And there are a lot of people who have a lot of shame that they carry with them and oftentimes close themselves off from others. But yet what they're, when they're with family or friends or loved ones, oh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Hey, let me go get you some food. Hey, I got the fast food. Don't worry about it. Let me get the Uber for you. Hey, let me pay for this dinner. They don't have money. In fact, the la last time that we met her, that we met, was a couple of weeks ago. Out of all those branching paths, they came back and we're doing outreach. We're doing outreach for homeless people, and in comes this person with whose dreams and values and everything I remember from way back then, from you know the first time that separated. And here we go again. And here's this connecting dot. And here I am in a position to help. I highlight this because sometimes life can take us through wild rides. Sometimes life can throw us through big loops, right? And sometimes life can completely disconnect us from everything. And we can try and hide ourselves behind our screens, behind the, like, you know, Oh, look at this. I'm with the penguin, right? Type of photos and whatnot. Guys, if you're struggling, if you're going through something, reach out, open up, say something, you know. And if, and if you're having trouble, you know, it's okay to slowly attempt to reach out and do, do something and talk about your mental health. Here's the thing. We often heal, heal by talking and seek out a mental health therapist in your area. There are professionals out there who do it pro bono without, without needing to pay anything. You, like We just have to go ahead and go out there and talk about it. Anyway. Oh. Hmm.
Mmm. A new opening. Mmm. A new opening. Guys, what are butterflies often used to represent? Rip five hours, terms of service. Change. Change, exactly. Change. And even through them, right, there, there's often the saying of the butterfly effect, right? Where if you kill a butterfly in one aspect, what happens to the other side of the world or what may happen or so on and so forth. But just seeing the aspect of change, right? At the very beginning, we have this aspect of longing and this journey and this big thing. And considered to now, which we have the aspect of change, huge. No, not hands. Not hands. So many people are like, hands, the aspects of change, no, in fact, you can even say hands might be the aspect of manipulating your environment for change, but change can be anything. The grass might be change. The, the, the water might be change. The screen might be change for someone. What I find interesting about this one compared to the other one, Metamorphosis, just didn't didn't see you did sixteen already and seventeen came out today. Uh, butterfly means anti. Okay, anyway, here's a, here's a big difference between this one and the other one. How did the other one start? A recollection of memories, right, and then her waking up and going towards uh, Himmel. As opposed to this one where she stands up and she's smiling and walking towards, again, her new group. It's interesting that there's similarities and there are like some strong differences in that. One in a world without almost color, you know, kind of just like the rough lines and everything. Uh, maybe some, some like diluted colors versus now with all of these colors as well. Hmm. Butterfly means hentai. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, new friends. Mm. Oh. I'm looking at this, and, and I have a question for you, and I really want you guys to tr try and take this and, and ponder it, right? What do you guys think that Frieden's hair means? I don't, I don't know the answer to this. Like, no, like I, I really don't. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Or like, well, what are you talking about, me? There's a difference in the way that Frieden is at the very beginning, you can even tell at the other episodes, where she was with uh, Flame, right, to how she is today and how she styles her hair today and, you know, all of the different aspects that that she does. I don't think other than the author. Because we use aspects of ourselves to symbolize change, right? We This is why people get manicures, pedicures, um, new glasses and whatnot. And sometimes people are very like, hey, hey, you know, trying to go out and give you, give you a sign that there's change happening, right? They show their hair as flowers in Ed image on the ending image. But through that, like, I, I'm highlighting this because it's like, okay, is it is it a passage of time? Or is there something more? Is there something more related to why freedom prefers certain things the way they are? So, for example, weird, I know, but a self-reflectionary moment. Why do you... You could, say it's a metamor you could say it's a metamorphosis. Why do you wear the underwear that you wear? Why don't you wear underwear that has little dinos and uh you know a fucking pterodactyl coming through or like that's all scruffy and whatnot 
Because it's clean. Sama bakagar. Ultima Kawabi. Because it's clean. Okay, why do you wear the shirt that you wear? Or the clothes that you wear? Or the style that you wear? It keeps my balls from hitting my legs. Now I want that. I know, it's actually kind of... The more I said it, the more I'm like, wait a minute, it's actually kind of cute. Because <laughs> it's comfy. Because it's nice. Because it's clean. Why don't you wear the clothes that you were wearing five years ago or ten years ago? The same style. Not the clothes, but the style. A lot of people don't. A lot of people change wardrobes. A lot of people might just similarly, but might alter some, some things. A lot of people start adding accessories. A lot of people put on turtlenecks to try and feel sure of themselves. A lot of people take off turtlenecks because they don't need a turtleneck anymore. A lot of people open up their shirts because, hey, how you doing? A lot of people don't, right? Because all of a sudden it might be insecure. A lot of people were called, hey, you look really good in that shirt. That stuck with them and that is your style forever. A lot of people see it as a rite of passage, you know. Some people cut their hair the moment that they feel they disrespect someone. Other people, you know, we put it in buns or we do certain things whenever it's a rite of passage in martial arts or something. I wear whatever I have for now. Some people do. The, the reason why I highlight all of these different things is... If you were to come in for an assessment or you were to come in for an aspect of whatever and you change something drastically, something big, even something small, the question comes up, why? Aside from comfort, what does it mean to take pride in what you wear? Or what does it mean, what do you feel when you wear what you wear? Are you comfortable wearing what you wear? Why or why not? And the reason why this is highlighted and the reason why I'm, I'm even going through this is we're seeing very much a teacher-student relationship here. Flame, her, Frieden, and Fern. You know, like, it's going through the same cycles again. So, poll time. How many of you think that we're going to suffer a major loss coming soon? Not soon, but I guess... A couple of episodes, maybe 12 episodes, maybe not this season, but next season. I have a feeling that we're on the road for pain. We're on the, we're on the train to pain town. And it's been leaving us hints and clues. Hmm. As in death or separation. Is that Frieden and the elf that we see previously that's sitting on the throne with their feet like, like right there? Is that Frieden and... Wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. But what would the pain be for you, right? For free? Yes, you guys get it for free. I'm not, it's it's warm in my room. So so the, this is what I'm asking. It, oh God, yeah, the feed elf. Thank you, thank you. The reason why I'm highlighting this is because it's clear. It's clear that there are maybe similar but different, right? Maybe going down a similar path about how your environment can change you. And that's a big aspect that I, I guess I'll ask this. Are you, do you guys believe, poll time, do you guys believe that your environment can change your perspective entirely? Nature versus nurture. What do you guys think is more important? Poll time. Throw it up, mods. It's poll time. I'm really, really curious. I'm really, really curious, especially to see how this might uh, evolve, evolve in the future and how this is going to definitely affect the, the storyline as the way it's, it's, been, it's been seen uh, in the opening. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Skookong. Nature versus nurture. 
What do you think is more important? What's up, Foxy? How you doing? I hope you're doing well. Oh. Why does this remind me of Moshiko Tensei? Are we getting a school arc? Wait, wait, are we getting a school arc? <laughs> this feels like one of those moments where it's like, hey, yeah, we're, we're gonna, you know, fucking Naruto run in the background and like people are around us. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Oh, oh! All right, guys. What do you think is more important, nature versus nurture? What do you guys think that that is? Mage exam fight could be. Could be. Yeah. But also, if these guys, if these people genuinely go against Frieden, do they really have a chance? Yes, you're showcasing all of these individuals. Yes, you have to be wary of the attachments you make. Absolutely, no matter where you go, you have friends, but you also got to, you know, be a little careful about opening up too quickly or how you let people in or even being too cold because a lot of times how you make friends is important as well. 86% um, of people saying nurture is more important than nature. I love some of the just expressions, like the feelings that you can get out of a character's eyes, right? And just small, small movement goes fucking wild. At least I think so. I don't know about you guys, but like oftentimes I think a lot of anime is able to portray just the smaller movements and smaller nuanced movements better than some fucking random TV show. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys. Just the smaller movements down and whatnot. You can feel a thousand different things based off of that, which is nice. Also, this whole walking and seeing like the times change and evolve behind her. How she's now in this sketched out area. Right? That's like roughly drawn in the same way. That Frieden's opening was done. And what seems to be like a robe now and she's in color at the end. See, that's my sus list or his. I, I, don't, I don't know what their gender is. I'm just making an assumption based based off of just what we've seen. Uh, like, how does this OP affect your theory on Feet Elf? Does that mean that Feet Elf is bad? Has anyone ever complained about Feet Elf? I don't know, man. Ooh. Could be that they're just a, a mage student exam teacher, something along those lines. Okay, does someone have this opening in reverse? Because the first one, you can learn a lot about it in reverse. Worldmaker, thanks so much for the sub, dude. No, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're a fucking goat. You'll ping me. Okay, thank you, thank you. Ping me, ping me. Please, please. It's in general. It's in general. Tr yeah, bro, but fucking general goes quick. Thank you, thank you. Clever, thank you, appreciate it. All right, boys, you guys ready? Pop. Here we go. Here we go. Hmm. Hmm.
Clever, I have a question for you, actually. This is, this is going to be sound weird. Or whoever did this. Can you guys put... A season... Or core one... Core two running at the same time. And then core one running normal. Core two running in reverse. Like image image wise, you know what I'm talking about. Image wise. Sorry. You guys are like, wait, what the fuck? You guys just gotta. Hmm. Hmm. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Because the whole hold on by the end, we're gonna have like 16 videos playing, but Ed do be torturing. I'm cooking, hold on, let me cook. Okay, how can we not say that this isn't actually kind of cool, though? Right? Old party, new party, Frieden stands up. Like, that type of a thing. Similar sky, similar environment. Here's the reason why. And I know you guys might be confused. What is the difference between Frieden and this person down here? How did you read that? Oh my God. Don't match. Have to, have to scale. No worries. No worries. How do you guys interpret the difference between this person and this person? Thanks so much for following uh, Night Dart. Appreciate it. It's not. It's not. There's something I want to highlight through it. Specific. And that's why I'm waiting for Core 1. Because there's something in here that tells a very, very interesting story. Feed all physical. Aside from that, I life experience. All right. Tell me whenever you guys are ready. One focuses on the change around them. Mm. Mm hmm. This one's not as reversible as the first one, though, sadly. It's still nice, though. No way. I finally caught the stream and just in time for the beginning of the episode. Oh, Nightheart, welcome on in. Appreciate you coming on by. If you guys don't ask, mind me asking, if you're new to the stream here, um, what was the first video you guys saw? How did you guys find out about the channel and whatnot? Do you guys think that, like, for example, if there is a head mage here, a head mage here that's fucking badass, are they stronger and or weaker than Frieden? I'm going to be honest, considering Frieden's knowledge, like, and her years and expertise, you know, I have a feeling Frieden might just fucking slap, brother. Might just fucking slap just in time for the one hour stream. <laughs> Interesting. 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 I started watching you from Moshko Tensi reaction. Absolutely love them. Fantastic. And oh, well, thank you. Well, 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 thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Fucking love Moshko Tensi. You guys already know that. Fucking talk about the series to death. I find it awesome that sometimes some parallels can be seen. Where the fuck did the one hour go? Where sometimes parallels can be seen. Where at the very, very top, you know, we have Himmel and the, the doves and the birds and whatnot flying through. Kind of in a similar, like, scale to these butterflies. Change. Himmel was the aspect of change back then. But now are these people the aspect of change with them? Not the first time, but I got to our channel from T's recommendations. Oh, yeah, no, T's awesome, dude. That's why I'm... 
Mm. Mm. Of course, of course. I'm excited, man. I'm fucking thrilled. Please tell me you got it. Ah. This little little bit here where she either, she either stands or she sits is so well. And flower blossoms, change comes on until a future generation. I'm so fucking excited, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really, really excited, but I really want one thing. I want, and, and this is going to sound weird. And some of you guys are like, dude, you're just fucking overcooking. My brain is fucking pinging. Like, if it's a fucking fire alarm being like, boo, 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 fucking ridiculous. All right. My brain is pinging the beginning of the opening of Core 1 versus the girl walking, the new, the, the, the other elf walking, you know, in this core. And literally putting them side by side. That's what my brain is pinging consistently at the moment. It's pinging that there's an important message, symbolism, something there for us to be able to go out and just take away or analyze or something. I don't know why. Most of this like opening, I like the music. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. And I feel like we are going for, for while the first one felt more like a, uh, an adventure towards change, this one just feels like an adventure toward, or first one was adventure towards time. This one was more like an adventure towards change. And that's what I'm interested about. All right. Anybody have it? No, 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 no. No, apparently not. Apparently not. Not yet. Not yet. All righty. When you guys have it, let me know. Let me know. I'll pull it back up. No worries, Cleverka. You're fine, brother. Oh. 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 Oh, bro. The ship has sailed, brother. The ship has sailed, brother. I got that 160p going hard, Lena. <laughs> and the one and the two and the ship go. Uh, only reason why I'm saying this is think about where they were at the very beginning compared to where they are now. Compared to like the episode where they danced. They're more comfortable going up and holding each other's hands. They're more comfortable going up and talking about it, and even her pressing her hand against his cheek and doing these certain things. Yes, it comes off as a gag, but more importantly, it's showing that propinquity is an effect. It's showing that that damn P word I talk about, and it's not Senor Pinguino, is coming, to, it's coming through. That propinquity is, is everything, brother. And I think that's, that's an element that often needs to be touched on and often needs to be highlighted. Like... Guys, propinquity is real, and you just have to pay attention to the little signs to actually, like, see what's going on. Oh, Propinguini. <laughs>
And there's a serious blizzard. <laughs> Frieden is the real wizard, dude. Maybe Frieden needs to not say anything. Just let the stuff happen. Maybe Frieden needs to like not pause and wait a second before uh, before anything. Yeah, she set the flag, brother. To be fair, I feel like oftentimes a lot of us uh, accidentally set flags and then we trip him. We're like, why did this happen? It's blizzarding. No. Oh. oh. Right. So I, I kind of want to touch on this, right? Because in life, there, there's, there's a something similarly, right? That a lot of people say, like history tends to repeat itself, and I, I, I like the saying, like history rhymes, and and even in the way that we interact with others, right? Winner. Four people there. Ed Cameo. Wait, what? What? Four people there. Like, it, it's like it's rhyming itself all over again. Legendary stuff for like melting clothes. So an element that I, I that I want to ask you guys is, have you ever done a circular jump, a circular aspect? Have you guys ever? And this goes even for freedom because this is a mechanism that we often do to see if we're at an impasse taking a step for development or not or sometimes if it's too much and we're just like okay you know what i still don't think we're there right so what's up haruhi how you doing if you guys ever started here done a full circle and come right back to a very very similar decision and now you either pick do you continue this circle or do you start a new and break off the path Sometimes it's off the path might just end up coming right back over here. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes there's another opportunity and now you have three choices. Do you go back to the first, second, or do you break off the path? And sometimes you come all the way back and that's okay. That's okay. Life sometimes throws us through little things and sometimes you, you know, the actual path forward is up. The reason why I asked this, and I know some people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Cycles. I go the other way and make nice eight figures. We 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 are creatures of habit. We are. And we follow cycles. We follow different cycles available to us, you know. We follow different cycles that are there, uh, that we've pre-established, whether it's decisions, whether it's following the same cycle or thinking that we're breaking out of it, and boom, we end up right back in the same horrible decision. Or even like worse, it feels like we're taking the long way around and boom, we finally break out of it. I ask this because for a lot of people, we don't like to acknowledge it. A lot of us like to go and cover our eyes. A lot of, a lot of us like to think, wait a minute, we're at the very similar impasse here and we have a decision to make. Do we go our own separate ways? Do we break off from everything and anything that's been established already? Or do we try and make a different decision this time? Do we try and make a better decision this time? Pokeball, fastball, what? What? <laughs> A legendary level spells. <laughs> Remove tough oil stains. You know how 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 convenient Freedom could be. Freedom could literally start a start a whole fucking business here of just removing. Rough stains <laughs> from pots and pans and mold and rust. Laundromat. Frieden can literally, like, I don't know. She could probably grab a whole bunch of fucking, like, 
little mini me's or uh, I don't know some shit that can learn magic and like te- start a laundromat right and like literally teach them like one of them how to wash clothes right like imagine a, imagine a whole bunch of little cute like goblins or slime going around and fucking cleaning clothes and shit and Fina's like yes <laughs> Oh no, there's an entire isekai where a guy runs a laundry. <laughs> oh no, oh no, the slimes. Oh, true. Oh. Mm. Yeah. My man pushing me. Bro, this ship is fucking sailing hard. They're doing the activities together. They're pushing through everything. But also, I'm going to highlight this and I'll ask you guys this question. This might sound silly and whatnot. How many of you, and this happens naturally, and this is why I'm highlighting it for you guys to to see what what I'm referencing, have changed slightly because of your friends? Have like either adjustment of attitude or like gotten really into shit. For example... This, this is going to sound weird. I know. I know. I really, 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 and I know it's going to sound weird, want to get into Gundam. I really want to get into building shit. I really want to get into, like, painting Warhammer, like, you know, figurines and shit. Like, I, I re- genuinely do. Because I have I had a lot of friends that are into it, you know, and that are like, dude, you should try it out. You should do this. You should do that. You know, and I really want to get into it. Like, I, I just think that it, that it would be fucking great, right? How, however, sometimes I notice that, like, when I'm with other friends, I'm like, oh, dude, fuck yeah, because I'm a martial artist by heart. And they're like, dude, let's fucking spar. Let's do this. All of a sudden, it's like, not that I haven't subsided, like, my, my fucking love for, like, anime and whatnot, but I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. Let's fucking fight. Let's spar. Let's do shit, right? And the forms that we talk, the speed, the cadence at which we talk, our accents, our ways of even thinking start shifting along with the people that we're with. And we get really close with the people that we we like and we start separating ourselves slowly but surely, you know? Gunplus, look, yeah, yeah. You always wanted to get into Warhammer 40k SV? Yeah. No, I have my own stuff, Leta. I have my own stuff that I've, been, that I've had for a while uh that like have has been gifted to me i have a couple of models that even sagas has given me which is quite nice uh fun but very very expensive uh, a hobby yeah 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 but anyway here i'll show you guys and i'm using this as an opportunity for you guys to i'm showing you on screen So, for example, right, 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 it would be fucking amazing to, like, get into it. Like, thanks, Saugus, by the way, you're fucking amazing. But, like, I look at all of this stuff, and I'm like, hold on. Because we got to treat it with love and respect. we got to treat it with love and respect. And I'm like, I look at all of this stuff, and I'm like, we... We start acquiring some. Oof, we got to We start acquiring some of the items and the things that we think we can definitely like do to interact with friends or loved ones or whatnot. And I, I love love, yes. And I just think it'd be it'd be awesome to try and get into it. Maybe even like build shit together or laugh together or do certain things, you know, about it. But the the only reason why I'm highlighting this is look at Frieden, right? We're seeing how they they've had an impact in one another, right? Whether it's the working out, the closeness that's happening, the praying for uh, before the food, or saying thanks or whatever, that togetherness is there. So I'll throw this question to you guys: Have you guys noticed small changes when you're with a good group of friends? 
when you're when you're with the close group of friends. Building stream when? Probably in February. And the only reason why I say February is just because I have big events happening at my place this next couple of weeks, and I have like a bunch of things uh, going on. But yes, probably in February where I can get a camera pointing down on my thing. Yes, I have my speech changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, 80. Wait, what? Phrasing. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Dude. Oh. They're acting strange. <laughs> you can't tell me, brother. You you can't tell me, brother. They keep yelling and making slaps. You can't tell me. <laughs> Let us, that they ain't a married couple, bro. Just look at the way that they're interacting with one another. Oh, that's so adorable. It's so adorable, brother. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh, thank you, Clever. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, why? What'd you do? What'd you do? <laughs> Why behind like that? <laughs> ah, he's just gender equality. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. We all have... Sorry for the streamer here. You'll probably see a big dent in my head. We all have things that we do that calm us down, right? Some people stim. Some people do weird things. For example... I get a nosebleed when I'm thinking way too fucking hard and my brain's fucking overloading. I get a major nosebleed, right? However, there's other things that I do that like a, a soothing, right? If I'm like, I can be an extroverted person. I can go out and do speeches and 101,000 different things. That doesn't mean I don't sometimes get fucking socially anxious. All of us go like go through some form of anxiety at some point or another, giving a speech or whatnot. I do this to calm down, right? Because this is my way of grounding myself like i'll put my my hand over my chest or whatever as a way of like grounding myself maybe i see that like i'm getting too like anxious or too whatever as a way to go ahead and ground myself quickly however if somebody else were to do this and this is my grounding thing it might go from here all the way across right you might fucking trigger me almost fucking exactly because i'm like wait a minute this is what i do to calm myself down you might think you're helping me. You might think, oh, yeah, I'm getting you back or I'm helping you or something. But it might just act as a trigger. What does this do for Fern? What is, what, what is, what is like actually getting touched like this do for Fern? And I know some of you guys might be like, what the fuck are you talking about? What, what, what is getting touched like this do for Fern? And it's a surprise, fight or flight. The childhood flashbacks. Yep, yep, yep. So what you start seeing almost immediately, right? Blood goes somewhere else when people get horny, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it can. You got to remember, sometimes you might have a little blood vessel that whenever you get too worked up, your blood vessel just erupts. Surprise compared to doing it from the front. Because from the front, you can see someone do it. From the back, it's a complete and utter surprise. And you're not sure whether or not you're welcoming it or not. Which is interesting. And it's an interesting dynamic. It's interesting that she allows him to get this close. And that she might be even surprised. You're thinking that, hey, what the fuck's going on? Or I might just be completely dumb taken. It might be more like, hey, is more going to happen? Or are you just being a little kid? Which we know Stark. We know Stark. (laughs) I mean, do you guys like to take it from the back? Or do you, or would you guys take it from the front? Like, I don't know. I, I think it's easier to see what's coming and anticipate what's, ha- what's happening from the front than it is from the back, right? Unless you tell me that sounds so... <laughs> Shut the fuck up, guys. <laughs> Guys, we're, we're having a serious moment here about fucking fight or flight. Yeah, guys. guys. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I can't. I fucking can't. I don't mind being a... Do you like the pizza? I, I love stuffed crust. I love stuffed pizza. Like, mm, mm. It doesn't matter to me if, if it's someone I know. Yeah. I, one thing, I, one hand was holding her down while the other is very close to her ears and neck. Could be. Yeah. Guys. Right. Very good on the priest. Guys, if you're having issues with with others, don't expect someone else to come in and mediate. Communicate. Come here. Guys, guys, just, just, just... Hold on, let me see. Can can I get this close? Oh, I can, I can. Wait, wait, can I? Fuck, I can't. I wish I could. I wish I could. I was about to fucking do something for you guys. Never mind. Guys, come here. Come here. Hey, communicate. It's free real estate. Get in there. Share your feelings. How you doing? I fucked up. I I feel this way. It's okay. Uh, don't don't get too close. I'll blush. <laughs> Communicate, guys. And I think that's a big aspect. A lot of people are so afraid of confrontation. A lot of people are afraid of being reprimanded. A lot of people are afraid of being cut off. A lot of people are afraid of their attachments all of a sudden being snipped, right? Where they're like, I feel pain. I, I feel as though I can't like talk to them anymore. Or I can't confront them on this issue because then I'll lose all connection with them. How many of you are afraid of confrontation? I'll be honest. Some days I am. Some days I, I, I don't want to be confrontational. Some days I hate being confrontational. But some days we have to go ahead and say enough is enough. Some days we have to step up and be like, what is going on? Right? I am. I'm not a big confrontation guy. So then what if you're really unhappy with the friendship or with the relationship or with your parents or siblings? How do you voice for yourself? How do you say, hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable with this. Or I fucked up. Or this happened. How do you guys voice that? Right? And and I, I just think it's important to go and analyze and, and, and showcase that, right? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> Fight or flight. She's like, he could fucking. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> Stark wins. Flawless victory. No, but like, le- legitimately. <laughs> 
in a force like that, especially if, if, if this is the first time that you're encountering someone like that, or you're encountering, it really was holding her down, right? You're encountering a force that you haven't encountered before. Yeah, that can be surprising. That can be extremely surprising. She's okay with being touched as long as it's gentle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the priest is us, bro. Just fucking start dating already, dude. Like the propinquity is built. The fucking cycles are built. Everything's there. We we already know that there's a triangle of fucking love there. We we fucking seen it, boys. He's literally me. Oh. Oh. So I'd be like, just fuck already. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, I want to go ahead and preface this by saying, dude, you guys can definitely be the reason why your person starts to change. But please don't be the person that's like, I'll fix you. Like, <laughs> but, but, but I can fix that. Like, please, ladies and gentlemen, you can definitely be there for a person and like literally allow them the opportunity to start growing and changing with you. But don't be a person. Don't, 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 don't be the fixer, brother. What about... Fix it, Felix. No, not even fix it, Felix. A lot of people get trapped into the cyclical way of thinking where they have to fix things. But Ed, I can fix her, I promise. Can you though? For example, how many of you have heard that before or have said that before? And how did it go? I'll be honest, I said that in one of my past relationships. How did it go? Not well. I lied. I lied. I got hurt in the process. <laughs> But, like, you can give people a hand. You can help them out, right? But you should never be fixing another person, right? You shouldn't have to fix anybody. They should fix themselves, not you. Usudaru. Give the people a hand. They'll try to be the repair person. Exactly. Exactly, brother. How many women tried to fix my uncle and how many of my cousins I got from that? <sighs> Difference in the scenarios. Right. Right. No, and that's why I'm saying he's trying to go in and be like, hey, like, you know, come with us. You can be your own agent of change type of a thing. But he's not being like, I'm going to fix all of your issues because that doesn't happen. She's still broken, as we can see. Not really broken, but she's, you know, still figuring herself out from what we can see. Exactly. Be an Oshino. Right. Oh. 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 
I want you guys to just take that in for a second. An unforgettable hero like Himmel. How many statues of Himmel and the gang have it, have they had to like clean or have they passed that might not have been in the best condition or they maybe had to retouch already? How quickly do people, like, you know, do generations change and people start forgetting the situations, you know? And people start forgetting stories or putting them under the rug. It happens way too quickly. And thanks, Sagas. Sagas are immediately was like, two to three. <laughs> Give it a century. Give it two centuries, right? You can be a demon lord and you'll be unforgettable. Ooh. Yep. Oh. Bro, my fucking feels. It's a powerful episode, I think, so far of self-reflection. <laughs> and I think these first this first half of the episode has genuinely made me reflect back even on my own childhood and, and even process that. Like, you know, people that we've left behind that have changed goals and aspirations. And I'll even say this, like, it's never too late to start. It's never too late to change. It's never too late to to do certain things. And this is why... I'm always an advocate for, like, if, for example, if you're having a bad day um, and you're like, no, I, I can't, like, get up and do something again or I can't take the next step, it's like, it's never too late, right? It's never too late to do something in your life if you want that change. It's, it's awesome the way it's layered in and it's awesome to see the different reflectionary pieces as to how it uses, like, all the character attachments and our own emotions, right? To jump in and be like, just date already. But for them, that's scary. That's a big process of change, right? They're getting closer and closer and we're all seeing it. We're all fucking jumping in. But what stops you from doing that? We're so, we're fucking jumping at the hinges to be like, hey, just fucking do a date already. Stop, whatever. But what about you? What stops you from going on your grand adventure? You from dating that person that you've been thinking about or messaging that, that cute gal or girl or anyone in between that you've been super duper like just kind of interested in. What stops you from starting your process of change? Change is terrifying. But here's the thing. If you board yourself up, if you board yourself up in a room and the universe passes around you, eventually that door leading to your room will come down and change will see, see, like will start seeping in. Then the real question becomes, are you ready for that change? Or is that going to completely catch you off guard? Interesting stuff. Holy shit. What a, what a first, like, you know, first little bit there. Hold on. We have a segueing in. So this is what I love, right? Frieden, sketch on the top left here. I'm going to go ahead and move this down just so you guys can see it. Sketch. Somebody puts her hand out and gets her out of that area. Gets her out of that bump, right? Himmel is the one that goes ahead and, and is that agent of change for her, as we can tell there. She's walking through, right? Very similar way. Someone is there for her and allows her to start getting color in her life. As opposed to... Let's go all the way to the end. Her. 
who, bottom, bottom left, is all alone. Society keeps changing until society acknowledges her. What is the difference between when everyone acknowledges you, say society or the environment around you starts acknowledging you, versus when one person or a small group truly cares about you? What does that do to you psychologically? What does that do to you as a person right now? When you have a close group of friends and one person that genuinely cares about you and that genuinely wants to see you start succeeding versus when there's thousands or tens of thousands of people just being there and trying to make you out and change. What's up, Sage? How you doing? Hope you're doing great. You're finally live. Yeah, welcome on in. Appreciate you. How's everything going? I know it's been a hot minute. So what does that do for you guys? What happens when it's a small group of people or one friend that is there for you, that cares about you, that brings color to your life versus when you have, you know, society that just keeps changing and going and going through everything. Thanks so much for the stretch. And literally like evolving until you finally start gaining that color. I'm going to be honest, the expectations change. Your thought processes change. Do you as an individual matter in, in the ways of thinking? Do you... Do you empathize with everyone? Or are you like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to focus on the great masses. What happens to your thinking caps in an environment like this? What do you value more? And these are questions I'm throwing out there for you guys so you guys can go ahead and, 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 and question and even think and process differently. This is why the nature versus nurture question popped up. What do you think is more effective, nature or nurture? When you truly are there for someone, you help them out, right? And building their attachments. Or is it just your environment? Is it a part of our nature to be who we are? Or the, the connections and the memories and experiences that we have influence that despite of our nature, despite of our immediate environment? Anyway. Sorry, guys. Just really, really interesting stuff as always. With that being said, guys, we're going to take a quick little break. BP break, boop, boop, break. Go do whatever you guys got to do. We'll be, oh, given a choice between a small group that cares for all the people, small group matters. Sure, keeping an eye on the rest is useful, but there aren't those who are there. I think our nature is curious. Like, ooh, ooh, good, good debate question. Oh. Right. No. Oh. That's a casual see you later. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes it's it's the quiet ones that stick, like the quiet goodbyes that stick with you the, like the longest, right? Oh, man. So many memories just come flooding in. Like the more that we watch this show, the more that I'm like, if you've gone through, I think this this show can really appeal to a lot of people based on like if you've journeyed, if you've lost people, if like you've genuinely made friends and lost them all, or you've been on a search for finding yourself or finding friends or any aspect like that. This show can genuinely just process a lot of these emotions with you. Uh, and it often just gets overlooked or oftentimes, for example, I've heard like, I've heard this. It, it, Freedom is boring. And I'm like, what show are you watching? I know it's like, you know, it's a journey that you're taking with the characters. If you're expecting Freedom to just be like, ah, ah, you know, like you're not going to get that in Freedom. But what you are going to get is a big reflection of self, right? Not enough fighting and explosions. <laughs> Let's go get a bunch of uh, love, love or love, love uh, figures, man. Make the explosions happen in the background. 
Only way to only way to do it, brother. Only way to do it. Oh. Or maybe they're sick. <laughs> oh. Kagasaur, shut the fuck up. She's in love. <laughs> Maybe she just read a really good dojin and she's just, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, Mr. Wizard. Pobrecita, no cuando estás enfermo. I, dude, like, when I get sick, I'm like, the world's fucking ending. You predicted all of this, apparently. Twelve more hours. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. The roles are reversed. Last time, Stark was sick. You know, and Fern and Frieden, along with the elf, you know, the elf priest had to take care of him. But now the roles have flipped. What's different this time? What, we don't have an elf, a priest, or whatnot to be there, you know? My mother used to take away the blanket near the room in the winter. Really? My mom would get a fucking bottle of Vicks and like slap it on my chest, slap it on my back, slap it on my nose, slap it on my feet and be like, breathe. <laughs> Apparently. La pomada Vicks el revés. Oh shit. <laughs> I see that Vix made its way everywhere in the world, yeah. Oh, bro. <laughs> this is awesome. And I'll tell you why. I love eating this whole circle diagram. Oh, shit, not like that. <laughs> this is awesome because... It's the same here in India? Yeah, yeah. All right. We have Freeland's story. Big circle. Freeland's journey with Hemel. Big circle, right? They've got everywhere. They defeated the Demon Lord. They did so many cool things. Big circle style. Like, big circle stuff. Cool. 
Fridan's going on another journey again to try and like understand all that. Oh wait, Fridan and Stark are having issues. Oh, smaller connection, smaller thing, and there's Fridan. Now, what does this remind you guys of? This reminds me of something. And the more that I think about it, right, because we're so focused sometimes in like the, the, what's happening immediately outside of freedom, like in their environment. You're drawing a poop? That's a weird slime. <laughs> it reminds me of something that I very much love to talk about. I very much love to go into a lot. I wonder what it is. I wonder what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but I wonder. I, I, I wonder how this story interrelates with the outside and how the outside is interrelating back inside to Frida here. What is that called? God, I... I, I uh. Oh, wait, that's right. It's Brenner's Ecological Theory. <laughs> Masters, Brenner's. So specifically what I'm stating at is... We do have similar circles inside of Fridan's immediate core. I know, I saw it, Masters. We're, we're seeing the impact of the story, right? And ecologically speaking, we know that she's being driven by this outside force, right? By this big force of, like, the first story, the party with, with Himmel, everything that's going through, right? This is a whole core of remembrance of memories that is pushing inwards, and her immediacy is pushing outwards to recall those memories. It's a beautiful recollection of how the present affects the past and how the past affects the present and how this ripple theory goes out and affects our decisions. It's awesome because Freeland could like legitimately be like, wait, I remember doing this with the party and affect the people that are here, affect the people that are here, here, and even like the people that like she used to hang out with back then and use the past to affect the present. It's an awesome way of recollecting. It's an awesome way to showcase, like, in, in a broader aspect, the ecological theory at play. Powerful shit, dude. Awesome stuff. Oops. <laughs> awesome stuff, but... Hey, yo. Good thing I made it smaller screen. <laughs> mm. Mm. No. No. <laughs> Oh, freedom. <laughs> Stop it, mom. Mom, I'm all grown up, mother. Can't you see? <laughs> I can make decisions for myself. She really is. Not, not in front of the boyfriend, mom. Oof. 
Oh. That's actually one thing I really wish we had were like giant fucking tortoises, bro. Like, I don't just mean like the small ones that like are kind of big ones that we have here already, but I mean like giant, brother. Like something that could threaten the fucking alligators. <laughs> like, give me a huge old tortoise with like, you know, like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Wait, another tortoise. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Really, Sagas? I don't know that. Oh, that's a beautiful tree, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's <laughs> mm. So you're trying to ease the pain a little bit. Mm. Mm. My man, the whole reason why behavioral health exists. Some people just need emotional support, 100%. Some people just need a fucking peer support. Some people just need a fucking someone to listen to them vent in a professional capacity, brother. You know, start be smart sometimes, yeah. Some people do, though. You'll, you'll, mm. Oh. No. Bro. Oh. Stark just invented therapy, right? <laughs> oh. Bro, be him. Be him. -o. Just be him, Mel, please. Like, oh, he's so precious. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when people find out how Pozole is really made, or the original reason why Pozole is Pozole, you know, or look it up. <laughs> That's all I got to say. The Faded Wizard. <laughs> In case you're wondering. Oh, oh. Pretty good when you're feeling sick, but. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
boy oh boy oh. See, this is uh, wholesome, bro. Oh, this ship is sailing full steam ahead, brother. Ah. Oh. You're not you're not a child. You know, it, it's not weird if it's the homies. Fern feeling better. No, it, and it's awesome, dude, cuz like let's be honest, when you're sick and you start feeling better, new ed. No, it's it's still the same old ed. You know, <laughs> like when you start feeling better, it's it's like a world of change. It's an aspect of like getting that energy back and taking those steps forward. He meant ending, new ending. <laughs> well, guys, pull it out. Don't just say new end. It's it's still me. God. All right, new ending time. Oh, the response. And I'm all right. Remix. Next to a tombstone. Oh. Yeah. I'm fucking like tearing up and shit. What the fuck? Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm over here like. <laughs> oh, thanks, Comfy Bite. They don't want to fucking tear up, but this ending, bro. Oh, oh, oh. It was a call and response, bro. Oh, are you all right? And then, like, you don't get the answers until the end. <sighs> and now that they are stating that they are all right and the changes and whatnot that comes through with it. Oof. 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 Bro, I'm fucking like, uh uh. <laughs> yeah lots to cook there brother well it think about it as, as a literal fucking story though right if you take the ending from like the uh, the first season and this ending and you put it right next to it like literally are you all right like in the passage of like that journey those first 12 episodes what is going through with it to now literally stating like i am all right right so, like, are you really going to be okay to, hey, it happened, it sucks, and I'm okay. And even the imagery behind all of this, right, of, like, I will say, though, this is one thing that scares me. This is one thing that genuinely scares me, and it's this. And you guys might be like, nah, bro, shut the fuck up. Don't, don't fucking, don't say that, bro. Don't say that. You guys ready? You guys ready? You guys ready?
This right here scares me a little bit. The call on the... Re that scares me. <laughs> That's all I got to say is that fucking terrifies me. It terrifies me that... Yeah. Yeah. I choose for my own peace of mind I choose to believe that that's that that's Himmel. I hope it is. I hope it's her being like I'm over here just taking a está mimiendo. <laughs> she just sleepy. Why eepy? No, but look at the positioning. Look at look at how she is, right? How she's laying down, looking up, that whole aspect. Compared to like the very first thing we see here. In a in a hill very similar to this, where she gets very eepy and she lays down. It could be one of two things. And this is what I'm scared of. Number one, reflection of Himmel. Right. Maybe it is Hemel's grave. Maybe she is just paying. Reverse the ending. Oh. Oh. Yeah, laying down on a grave does not look good. Reverse the ending. Someone reverse the ending. <laughs> oh. I think that you've paused on it. The one that you've paused on is, fl is flame. Well, I hope it is. And I hope it's not like a message that like she's going to lose Fern in the future. And that, that that's going to be too much. That that's going to literally like, I don't know, break her in some way, shape or form. I'm, I'm terrified. I'm terrified of what may come. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Regardless, both of them have to learn how to grow. Both of them are learning and growing and advancing in their own ways as individuals, as whatever you guys want to go ahead and call it. But powerful ending. Really, really powerful shit, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what else to say other than the imagery is fantastic. I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this show is actually going to go. What's it going to touch on? And especially to do an, an ending analysis, which I'm thinking about doing next week, ladies and gentlemen. Thinking about doing a full-on ending analysis next week. Whew. Man, what an episode. Guys, if this episode hit you on the fields, what was this like? What would you guys rate it out of 10? Because personally, for me, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, man. This was a pretty good bring-back episode. Full of feels, full of like different fucking imagery of actually being able to go ahead and see and... I don't know, understand the characters like that. With that being said, also, YouTube, bye. I hope you guys had a good time. Hit that like button, subscribe. I don't know what else to say other than, like, I appreciate you all being there and helping out and whatnot because the editors will get this up when they can.